Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We're going to be doing another realistic rebuild here. We're going to be taking on Cincinnati, the Bengals, and I did do them before, but I failed pretty bad. Uh, I do feel like I can make a better chance and a better run to the Super Bowl this time. Shout out, though, to the real MVP for the suggestion. I appreciate it, bro. Let's go ahead and hop into it here. We'll preview the team real quick. Uh, so I did put a few people on trade block, including Andy Dalton. He's on the trade block. Uh, Gionavi Bernard, he's on the trade block. Might be able to get a good pick out of him. Uh, defensively, I put Carlos Dunlap on the trade block. I did trade Vontez Burfecht last time. I think I might try to keep him this time just to see if he can do anything good for us. Um, and then I think that's it. That's all I do have on the trade block there. But previewing our team, we do have Carl Lawson, who's going to be a young pass rusher. Geno Atkins is obviously one of the best in the business there. William Jackson, an 84 overall cornerback, who should be able to develop well for us. Uh, besides that, we do need to get him some help. Uh, Dequiz Denard is 26. I mean, he can still maybe be a slot guy. I don't know if he'll upgrade, though, to be a good duo here for William Jackson. And then linebacking core, we do have Preston Brown. Do want to get another good left outside linebacker here. Safeties. They could use an upgrade as well. Offensively, quarterback's obviously going to be the way to go. Running back, I'm hoping Joe Mixon can develop. Wide receivers, it's tricky there. It's real tricky because last time I kept A.J. Green, he regressed pretty badly. Like, he started regressing really bad. So it's tempting for me to throw him on the trade block, to be honest. It really is. But I'm going to keep him for one year. John Ross is going to play the second receiver and the slot. Tyler Boyd just going to be our third receiver. Offensive line's pretty bad. I mean, we do have a decent center. But besides that, we have an okay left tackle. We got a good tight end, though, in Tyler Eifert that I'm hoping can stay around for a lot of the rebuild. Let's go ahead and set our season goal, though. I think we'll get about seven wins this year. Not a lot. It's not going to be a good year for us, I don't think. And I'll come back and see if we get any trade offers for any of those people I put on the block. All right, so we do have a couple of trade offers. I also forgot to mention I put our free safety... Eloka on the trade block as well because uh, I do want Jesse Bates to obviously take that role considering he's a rookie was a lot of upside and this guy's an older safety looking to get rid of him definitely not going to take a first round pick even though that is ju ju juicy I can't uh, screw the sim out like that um, I mean I don't know a third round picks kind of pushing it but I guess we got to get what we got to get here um, there's a lot of teams that want him. I mean, he is a 79 overall free safety, 28. I don't know what the, why everybody's all over him here, but I guess, man, which team's going to do worse, you think? The Giants or the Panthers? Ooh, that's a tough one. We get a fifth round pick, though, as well. I'm going to roll with the Panthers here. They might be decently, actually, no, I'm going to roll with the Giants. I want a higher third round pick. So we're going to trade the Giants him. Then let's go ahead and take a look at what I was getting offered for Carlos Dunlap. Definitely wanted to get rid of him. We should be able to get a decent pick for him. I mean, a second round pick probably isn't out of the realm of possibility, considering he's an 84 overall defensive end. The 49ers are all over him. I'd, man, I'd love a second round pick. I don't want to trade in the division, though. That's that's something I don't want to do. Nazir Jones isn't bad. Um, I think we're going to have to roll the 49ers, though. They're probably going to be the worst out of these teams. Add another third-round pick to the collection. And that's going to be it here for the trade block. I guess I might get one a couple weeks later, but doesn't look like we're getting rid of Andy Dalton anytime soon. All right, guys, so we're going to be back here at midseason. One other thing I did notice, I did like the scheme fit that Cincinnati does have. They seem to always be able to get some good numbers with this scheme. At least the quarterback does. But uh, our offensive linemen all have to be agile to be scheme fit, which is always tough. It's always tough to have all agile linemen that are good. Because usually if you're agile, you're not going to be too strong and that'll hurt you real bad. Geno Atkins, definitely want to bring him back. Probably going to be for the whole rebuild. Actually, you know, that's tough. That's really tough. Gosh, dude, what do I want to do there? Oh, there's so many... So many things I could do here. Tyler Eifert, I mean, I definitely want to bring him back for a tight end for the rest of our rebuild. But Geno Atkins at 30, that's really tough. 
Man, he's going to start going downhill really quick. What I'm thinking about doing is franchise tagging him next year and then throwing him on the trade block. So I might actually do that because he really, I remember the last rebuild, he started regressing badly, like really bad. At the end, he was down to like a 78 overall. So the regression system, it just doesn't make any sense, but I have to do what I got to do, you know, to try to get a Super Bowl here. So I know Geno Atkins is really good. But we're in a rebuild mode, so probably going to franchise tag him, throw him on the trade block next year. Tyler Eifert, going to bring him back, want to bring back Dequez Denard to at least be my slot guy for the rest of the rebuild. Uh, besides that, probably not going to bring anybody back. Actually, Preston Brown's pretty decent. I don't know if he's a great middle linebacker, but we can always bounce him to our left outside linebacker to a play alongside Vontez Perfect. Even though I'm not a fan of him, we'll keep him around. I mean, not of Preston Brown, of Vontez Perfect, but that's going to be it here for the midseason re-signings. Let's go ahead and hop into the end of the season. Back here at the end of the season, uh, we did not make the playoffs, and that's not surprising. We did finish 7-9, and nine, which isn't bad for the first year at all. Let's go ahead and check out how many upgrades we got here. So a few on defense, not much. Not much at all here. And I guess we'll see how bad Geno Atkins does regress. And if he regresses about three points, I'm for sure putting him on the trade block in franchise tagging him but uh offensively not a lot of upgrade points either i guess john ross does come in with three that's decent joe mixon two not a lot on the offensive line which could hurt us decently so yeah not a lot of upgrade points as a whole though stats why wow baltimore finished 13 and 3 let's go ahead and see what andy dalton did here 3700 yards 28 touchdowns 12 picks only a 59 percent completion rate isn't good Running the ball, Joe Mixon gets a thousand yards, nearly 1100, three touchdowns, but three fumbles. Receiving, oh wow, John Ross has a great year 85 receptions, 1100 yards, seven touchdowns. Decent year from the slot there. AJ Green, 76 receptions, nearly a thousand yards, nine touchdowns. Tyler Eifert, I mean, not a great year, about 54 receptions, 500 yards, four touchdowns. Tyler Boyd didn't have a great year either. So, yeah, I, I'm going to say quarterback. I'm going to chalk that up to that. Sacks-wise, our offensive line actually played pretty decent. Surprisingly, defensively, 107 tackles by Preston Brown, who is coming off a contract resign. Should be here for the rest of the rebuild. Vontez Perfect had a decent year. I'm worried about him regressing, but he is only uh, 28. So, I mean, it could be a problem, but we'll see. Jesse Bates has a decent year in tackles. He gets an interception as well. Dequez Denard. Uh, Sacks-wise, we get 8 by Michael Johnson, 7.5 by Geno Atkins, 6 by Carl Lawson, and then 5 here by Vontez Perfect. Interceptions, 3 by Sean Williams. William Jackson with 2, and then a few 1-bombs here. So, I mean, not a great year, but it wasn't horrible. So I guess we started off decently. Our team performed, I guess, as well as you could expect. But going to hit these auto upgrades on these players. And then we'll hop into some free agency. And hopefully, you know, we'll get somebody good. And I might, I'll let you guys know if I did end up franchise tagging Geno Atkins to put him up on the trade block. All right, guys, look who is available here. Khalil Max available. And so is Trent Brown. So we're going to go after both these guys. And those are going to be our only negotiations I'm offering Khalil Mack here a hefty contract to try and come to Cincinnati. And we'll see if he accepts it. This would make that Geno Atkins trade look pretty good. Because I did franchise tag him. And he did regress decently. So I'm going to throw him on the trade block. But first, let's go... Uh, actually, let's go ahead and throw him on the trade block real quick. In case we get an offer next week. But let's go ahead and see if these guys accept it. Please, Mack, accept this. Please. They both accept it. We get Trent Brown and we get Khalil Mack. That is massive. That is bigger than massive, dude. That's that's insane right there. So we got a good right tackle to add to the team. Uh, might bounce him over to left tackle. We'll see. And then we get Khalil Mack to add a great presence there for the pass rusher. And that's going to be a great free agency period. Probably one of the best I've ever had. So we'll see if we can't get rid of Geno Atkins as well. And then we'll go ahead and hop into the draft here. All right, guys. So I did an attempt to trade here and it actually worked out. And I'm happy with it. I think it's a realistic trade. Let me know what you think in the comments because you do know I like to keep 
the trading realistic, but you know, I don't go after enough draft picks that end up being anything. So I did want to try to trade up. We get the first overall pick and we give up a decent amount for it. Uh, we trade Geno Atkins. You know, some people might say it's a year or two early, but it's better than being a year or two early and getting a first round pick for him. Then if we tried to trade him in like two years, we wouldn't even be close to this. Because he's going to start regressing pretty bad. So that 90 overall, that's a decent right there. So we trade that. We also give up Andy Dalton, who is a... Uh, could start for him. I mean, they have Sam Darnold, but trade Andy Dalton to them. And we also give up a second round pick that's decently early. So I'm happy with this. We're going to have two first round picks to try to go get our quarterback as well. So I'm excited. So we're going to be in the draft here. We do have two first round picks. We pick first overall because we didn't do that trade. And then we pick 14th. I feel like we got to go get our quarterback. There's really no ifs, ands, and buts about it. We got to go get our quarterback. After trading Andy Dalton away, there's a few good late quarterbacks that look to be decent, like Will Grier here, but, you know, we don't have a second-round pick, so I am going to roll probably with the safest of the picks. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, Drew Locke, and he's probably going to be the safest pick here. He's got decent attributes, it looks like, so we're going to roll with him. He's a 77 overall with star development, and he immediately gives us the same overall as Andy Dalton with way more upside. So, you know, this is a really good pick. 90 throw power, good overall accuracies, decent starting awareness, and he's going to have star development. So we look to have ourselves a franchise quarterback here. And then with our second first round pick, I mean, there's some options. Like going receiver is an option. But to be honest, I feel like I need to get a left tackle that can protect my quarterback, my newly acquired quarterback that I'm excited about and it's really which way do we want to go here Jawan Taylor is going to be the most scheme fit guy for us he is what is he a late first round prospect mid first round prospect good overall attributes at 21 he's a scheme fit player so we're going to roll with him try to build this team up probably from the bottom up and we go out and with our 14th pick we draft ourselves a left tackle which I think is a smart decision. You know, we get our quarterback. Now we get somebody that can protect him. And that's a young stud that should develop well alongside him. I think that's a good pick for us. So with our third round pick, remember we did not pick in the second round. We traded that one away to acquire that first round pick. We need to fill a hole that, you know, Geno Atkins is going to leave after trading him. So Isaiah Bugs here has B power moves. Uh, and he's a decent overall defensive tackle. It looks like really good 40 and he's a 76 overall with quick development. He's going to be a power rusher. Not going to have great finesse move, but he's going to be a nice run stuffer with good power move. And that should really add to the defensive line. So with our third round pick here, we do have a couple. I am going to go with a linebacker to really try and secure our linebacking core. Um, This guy does have pretty good coverages. I know it says we have power rusher for scheme fit, but I'm not sure why because we're running a 4-3. And we definitely don't need a power rushing linebacker here. So we're going to probably go with the guy with the best combine here, a linebacker. Tavon Connie, 77 overall. He's going to be a nice run stopper. Not going to be a pass rusher, but I really don't need one. And with that speed and strength, he, he's going to be nasty. Now we are going to go defensive tackle again because we do need a second defensive tackle here to go along with our first pick of the defensive tackle. And this guy has B plus block shedding. I know he doesn't have the sexiest combine, but though that skill set is really good. So we're going to roll with him. He's a 75 overall. Uh, he's got really good block shedding, decent strength, and real good power move. So he's going to start alongside our other defensive tackle for sure. And with the last pick that I show you guys here, I think we're going to have to go guard. It might be a bit of a reach. But uh, it says 7th round. We're picking in the 4th round. I just want to get this offensive line right. This guy's a late 7th round projected. I'm pretty sure the early talent is messed up though. These draft classes always have a little... Well, they're a little buggy. So we're going to roll with this guy. 34 reps. And he's a 74 overall. I was hoping for a bit more. To be honest. But yeah, I mean that, that lead blocking is a little tough. He's got decent awareness though. So I mean I guess that's a... That's a decent pick. A 74 guard isn't horrible. So we're back here in Season 2. Uh, we got a really good team, to be honest with you. I really like the way we're looking. 
uh, really everywhere right now. Our offensive line is improving greatly. I mean, we pick up Taylor here from the draft. We sign, well, yeah, we do sign Trent Brown in free agency. We got a decent center here in Billy Price. And then we get a good guard in Allen here from the draft, a decent one. So really only our position of need is going to be left guard. I did throw Cordy Glenn on the trade block, see if we can get something for him. Sometimes, you know, somebody can use a veteran left tackle sometimes. Drew Locke, going to be our quarterback here. Uh, he's really good, 77 overall star development. He should be a stud. Then we have Joe Mixon, obviously going to be the leading back for our team. Receiving core is a bit worrying. They are going to start regressing like A.J. Green and Tyler Eifert. But I do have young studs like John Ross and hopefully Tyler Boyd. He didn't get an upgrade point last year, unfortunately. But John Ross got like three. So I'm going to play him in the slot as well. Because he did pretty good last year doing that. Defensively, we got a whole lot better. Defensive line is nasty. We have Carl Lawson. We drafted two nice defensive tackles. Really good. Uh, Bugs is going to be the better run stopper with power moves. And then Willis has insane block shed. He has like 90 block shedding already. And then we obviously, the huge addition of Khalil Mack. We signed him a monster contract. It was like 130 or 140 million. Uh, you know, we pay him. We pay him what the Mac Daddy needs. And we bring him here to Cincinnati. Uh, defensive backs. They, they could use some work. William Jackson, obviously, is going to be the younger cornerback here. And hopefully can be with us the whole rebuild. But Denard is probably going to be a slot guy. And then Kirkpatrick is like 40. He's like a dinosaur in football years. So uh, we need to get a good secondary guy or a second guy to go along with William Jackson. Safety, we have Jesse Bates, who's a young safety. Williams, it, he's up there in age. He's going to need to be replaced pretty soon. But the linebacking core is pretty decent. Preston Brown, Coney, and then Vontez Perfect actually didn't regress at all. So that's going to be decent. We have a decent defense right now. So I, I think we can make the playoffs. That's what I'm setting our season goal to. I think we might make the playoffs this year. We'll see. And I'll check back with you guys here at midseason. So we are 5-2 and two here. I mean, I mean no, 4-3, and three, excuse me. But uh, that's not horrible. But of course, you know, the one year we're going to have an okay record here. The freaking Ravens and the Browns are going to be pretty good. So that's just my luck there. But let's go ahead and check out the players we're going to have to negotiate with. AJ Green is on here. Gosh, dude, that's really tough. That is insanely tough. He's, he's going to regress pretty bad. Probably going to have to bring him back. One William Jackson. Going to let Gio Navi Bernard go. Clint Bowling go. Uh, I mean, I'm probably going to have to let Tyler Boyd go. Uh, he Actually, he's not asking for much. I might try to bring him back. Probably will, actually, because he's not asking for much, so it's not going to be a huge cap hit. So, yeah, Tyler Boyd, William Jackson, A.J. Green, that's that's pretty tough, but we'll see what kind of a year he has, I guess. So, we're back here at the end of the year, and we finish 5-11. and 11. Somehow, we finish worse than we did last year, dude. Uh, upgrades, I guess we are going to have a couple here on the offensive line. A decent amount, actually. That's actually pretty good. Our offensive line upgraded pretty decent. John Ross only with one upgrade point. Tyler Boyd has one. Drew Locke coming in with two. Joe Mixon, two. Defensively, we get a couple. Not as many as I expected. Bit of a down year? Well, I mean, what happened? We'll have to take a look here at the stats. Let's see what Drew Locke did his rookie year. So, Drew Locke, 3,800 yards, 23 touchdowns, 12 picks, 64% completion rate. I mean, that's not a good year, but... As a rookie, that's okay. Rushing the ball, Joe Mixon doesn't even get a thousand yards here. Only averages 3.6 yards a carry, seven touchdowns. Receiving the ball, we get John Ross, 81 receptions, a thousand yards, four touchdowns. Uh, Tyler Eifer, 70 receptions, about 900 yards, seven touchdowns. Tyler Boyd doesn't get a touchdown, but he has about 600 yards. AJ Green having a bit of a down year. I haven't re signed him yet, and I, to be honest with you, I don't know if I'm going to. I really don't because he's going to start regressing and I can tell you right now he's going to probably be to a 89 overall this offseason. He wants a three-year contract and I think a lot of the mistakes I make come re-signing players that are just too old and they regress pretty bad. So I don't think I'm going to bring him back. I mean, look at that. Development trade decrease as well. So you're talking about 
normal development. He's not going to upgrade. He's going to start regressing badly, so probably not going to bring him back. Unfortunately, so we're going to have to look. Oh, my God. 22 sacks? What the hell happened? Dude. That's that's disgusting. We get 129 tackles, though, from Preston Brown. Sean Williams with 96. Dequez Denard, 95. Kirkpatrick, 91 sacks. We get 18 and a half from Mac coming in, doing nasty work here. Four and a half here by Isaiah Bugs. Four and a half by Jared Willis. I mean, Carl Lawson. Hey, bud, you're going to have to step up. Your partner had 18 and a half sacks and you had three and a half. All right, dude. So I'm going to need a little more production from you. Two picks here by Brown, two by Kirkpatrick, and then two by Williams. Some one bombs here as well. So, I mean, Mac just is the MVP right now this year. I like to do MVPs of each year, and Mac was the MVP for my team this year. So that's going to be it here for the offseason. Unfortunate second year. I thought we'd do pretty good. I mean, Mac came in to play. But, uh, you know, we just struggle a bit there on the offensive line. 22 sacks allowed is horrific. So that's going to be it here. Let's go ahead and hop into some free agency. Going to let AJ Green go. I know it's going to be a tough loss, but I think I'll cut my losses and save a little money there. So we're going to be back here in free agency. And there's a couple good players available. As you can see here, Miles Jack is available. But our linebacking core is solid. So I'm not going to go spend a lot of money there. Look, what I said is uh, true there. AJ Green, 89 overall. That's why I got rid of him. So, uh, yeah. You know, he wants a lot of money still, and no teams are bidding for him. I mean, he doesn't have a high market. I think we made the right decision there, to be honest. Uh, I'm going to show you my negotiations here. Kevin Byard is available. That would secure a huge spot for us, and I'll tell you what I was going to do. If we do get Kevin Byard, I am going to bounce Jesse Bates over to strong safety, and then we should have a pretty good safety core. Then Corey Coleman's really going to be the best option I can get for the least amount of money here. Corey Coleman, 82 overall, decent wide receiver, and that would give us a, a decent core, not great at all in any means, but okay, and then Joe Thune, I know he's 80, I mean, I know he's 27, but that would be a pretty big signing, that would give us a great offensive line, really good, we'd have good tackles, good interior, so I really like those right there, so we'll see if they do accept it, come on, bro, please, please, they all accept it. I mean, we're not getting cheated here. They're accepting contracts. So we get Kevin Byard, Thune, and Coleman. So now let's go ahead and hop into the draft, where we do pick pretty high. So we're going to be back here, this time in the draft. Uh, Man, the receiver I wanted went off the board, and we picked number five. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of good receivers here, especially later in the round. But this guy is hard to pass on. He's got a B-plus deep route running. A plus medium. He's got great release. I mean, he doesn't have like any special attributes here. And we're going to have a really small receiving core. I mean, think of it. John Ross, Corey Coleman, and now a 5'8 deep threat. But we're going to have to roll with it. That's the best one we got here. He's an 81 overall. He's, oh my dude. Okay. I, I, I completely take it back. This guy is a monster. Look at his speed. He's going to start at number one receiver immediately. This guy is going to be insane for us. There was a cornerback I did have my eye on, and he's still available. Keon Hamilton. He's got decent coverages, it looks like, and he's only 21, so we're going to go with him. He's going to be a 75 overall player. Not great, but, I mean, he's got decent attributes. I know he's not the fastest, but he should be a nice slot guy for us. Well, with not a whole bunch of needs here, I think I'm going to roll with a quarterback just because I always like to have a little bit of trade bait here in case we need to make a move. So I'm going to roll with this guy. He's a 78 overall superstar. Bro, we're going to be able to get something for him. Matt Kane. Superstar development, 21 years of age. I'm going to stick with our quarterback, Drew Locke, over this guy. Even though this guy is superstar, but... We should be able to fetch a nice price for him. And with the last pick that I show you guys here, I think I'm going to go kicker. I know, it's a, I know it's kind of a weird pick, but it's always nice to have a decent kicker here. 
Uh, and we'll see if this guy's going to be any good for us. So we're going to go kicker with our fourth pick. And we get a 69 overall kicker. Not good at all. Does it, I mean, those aren't bad accuracies, but they're not what I was hoping for with a fourth overall pick. But I'll show you guys if I do end up drafting another gym. Year three, and we're looking pretty good again. I mean, hopefully we can get something done. We have a decent O-line here. Billy Price is upgraded really good. He's up to an 83 overall. Our tackle's up to an 80 overall, and then Trent Brown is really good. Receiving core, I guess, is pretty good. Tyler Eifert isn't regressing too bad. We do got a lot of young talent that are going to have to upgrade pretty quick for our wide receivers. We go out and get Hunt. He's going to start as our number one wide receiver here. Corey Coleman, number two in the John Ross in the slot. Joe Mixon's going to be our third down running back and power running back. So he's going to have both those. And then Drew Locke is up to an 80 overall here. Defensively, we're looking pretty good, though, to be honest. Kevin Byard is going to add a lot of... A lot of talent to that safety core. Jesse Bates has star development, so he should start upgrading. Linebacking core is pretty good. Vontez Perfect is not regressing. Cornerbacks could use some work for sure. Defensive line is also pretty decent, though. Our defensive tackles played well, I guess. And then, obviously, Khalil Mack's going to play well. I'm hoping Carl Lawson can have a breakout year. At least, at least one can hope. He's with 87 finesse move. And you know Khalil Mack's going to get double teamed probably every play. You should be decently productive. So we'll go ahead and set the season goal. I think we get about 9, 10 wins. Oh, and yeah, about that quarterback I drafted with superstar development. I'm not going to trade him yet. I think I'm going to wait a year on it. And then we'll see kind of at the end of this year if we don't make the playoffs what our need is. And we'll go after some player probably at that position. Try to get a pick for him. So let's go ahead and simulate the midseason here. See what's going on. So we're back here at midseason. Uh, we're 4-4, four and four, bro. We just can't seem to get off these average starts. I mean, come on, man. Uh, I'd love to see a bit of something other than 4-4. Four and four. It's, That's what it's been like every year. Players are going to have to negotiate with. I think I've seen Vontez Perfect. And I think I'm going to have to resign him because he's played very good. He is an 88 overall. He hasn't regressed at all. He actually gained an upgrade point at one point. So I really like him. He's coming back. I mean, yeah. And then we got Joe Mixon, 85 overall. Got to have to bring him back. Carl Lawson, he's coming back. John Ross, also I do want him back. And that's probably going to be it. Just those main couple people here. Main four people are going to come back. That's going to be a bit of cap. But we do have a decent amount of cap to spend after getting rid of that contract negotiation with Andy Dalton. Also another bright spot of drafting a rookie quarterback is we're not going to have to pay any quarterback really any big money this whole rebuild. So that should be pretty good. Have a little bit more money there as well. So I'll get these signings done and then we'll see where we're at at the end of the season. Well, no playoffs here for us. We finish 6 and 10. I don't understand how. How are we finishing this garbage? Jesus, dude, I, I don't get it. Uh, we upgraded decently on really... All the receivers, I would have to say, yeah. Defensively, we don't get much upgrade points at all. And that's hurt us. We just haven't upgraded defensively. I mean, Jesse Bates has four upgrade points, but besides that, we're struggling. We'll go ahead and check out the stats here, see what's going on. Passing yards. We'll see here. We get 3,800 yards, 25 touchdowns, 8 picks, 66% completion rate. Pretty good year for the second-year quarterback here, Drew Locke. Running the ball, Joe Mixon, 1,100 yards, six touchdowns. Need a little bit more touchdowns than that, if we're being honest. Receiving the ball, Marquise Hunt leads the team in receptions, 92. 1,000 yards, five touchdowns. Tyler Eifert is up there. Eifert. Tyler Eifert's up there in receptions. And he has about 800 yards, eight touchdowns. Corey Coleman didn't get any touchdowns. So I don't know what's going on there. John Ross had a okay year from the slot. Uh, Joe Mixon doing decent work in the receiving core. So I think we found out that Corey Coleman might not be the answer for us here at receiver. So I think I'm going to make a move to trade our quarterback that has superstar development. And maybe Corey Coleman for a higher up receiver. We'll see. Go ahead and check out how blocking held up. For some reason our tackles aren't playing good. And I couldn't tell you why. They have decent overalls. I don't get what the problem is. Defensively, we got 112 tackles from Preston Brown. Same amount from Perfect. 
Denard, 87 sacks. We get 17 from Khalil Mack. I mean, what more do you want here? Carl Lawson coming in with his three and a half, bro. Come on. What is happening? Seven by... Dude, I don't get it. Interceptions, four by Jackson. Three by Bates. Three by Denard. And then three by Hamilton. Pretty decent year by the Rook. One... Oh, I thought Mac had one. I was about to be like, bruh. So that's going to be it here for the end of the season. I'll see if I can't pull a trade together here for an elite wide receiver we need to add, it looks like, to this team. All right, so this is what my negotiations are looking like here. We're going to have Khalil Mack still at the left end. I know it's I'm offering a left end, a contract, but I would be willing to bounce him over to right end. And then what I would do with Carl Lawson is actually bounce him to defensive tackle, see how he does from there. He does have decent strength, so I really like that. And then we're going to offer Desmond King a contract. That would add really good help to our corners. So I'm really hoping that this goes through. I'm actually going to increase this a bit more. Because this is this could be the rebuild, to be honest. If we get Tack McKinley here. Because that would add some massive pass rush to our team. I don't know if he's going to accept it, though. Because Khalil Max at his spot. We'll see, though. They both accept it, so we do get Tack McKinley, and we also get Desmond King. Now I'm going to go out and attempt a trade here, see if we can't get ourselves a good wide receiver. So this is what I'm going to offer here, Tampa, for Mike Evans, and I think it's a very fair offer. We're going to give up Corey Coleman, who would immediately give them some good receiving talent. We're going to give them definitely their quarterback of the future. They don't have a good quarterback right now. This guy has superstar development. He's an 80 overall. I mean, and he's a scrambling quarterback, 87 speed. So we're giving them a real nice quarterback plus a second round pick. We'll see if they accept it. And they do accept it. So they get their quarterback, a good receiver, and our second round pick. And we trade for Mike Evans, who's going to give us that red zone threat that we've been looking for this whole rebuild since we did let go of A.J. Green. So that's going to help us out greatly. Now let's go ahead and hop into the draft. Doing a quick draft recap here. I only did get one person that's going to start here. And it's really one of the only positions we need at this point. It's going to be a right guard, Clay Roy. He's going to start instead of Allen, who hasn't upgraded as fast as I thought he would. This guy almost is reminiscent of Quentin Nelson as a rookie coming into the league. When you look at the stats he has, he is a really good guard. That we can bounce him over to. Great impact blocking, good awareness, good overall player. And that's going to be a very nice addition to the offensive line and should help us out greatly. In the fourth year here, I I'm going to have to say this is one of the best teams I think I've ever had in a rebuild. I know our quarterback isn't that high of an overall, but he has very good stats. Very good stats. Good running back in Joe Mix. And we get Mike Evans. We have that insane draft pick hunt. John Ross as a slot guy now. Tyler Eifert is pretty good still. And then this is by far the best offensive line I've ever had in a rebuild. With Trent Brown, Taylor, and then Roy the rookie. We got Billy Price up here. Th Joe Thune still with an 82 overall. Defensively, this is insane. The pass rush, we're going to be sending. Add people with Khalil Mack, Tack McKinley, Carl Lawson. Converted to defensive tackle is going to be a matchup nightmare. To go along with a good power rusher slash run stopper here in Bugs. Cornerbacks are really good. William Jackson, Desmond King, and Denard. Bit uh, upset about how William Jackson upgraded. I hoped he would have upgraded a little bit better than he did. But uh, 87 overall, still not bad. Safeties are pretty good with Jesse Bates and now Kevin Bayard, 93 overall. Then our linebackers are still upgrading. But Vontez Perfect finally has had his regression cycle. And he's down to an 84 overall, which isn't bad. Plus Preston Brown and Coney. We got to have a good year this year. If we don't make the playoffs this year, dude, I don't know. Our team is just really good right now. So we're going to go ahead and simulate the midseason, I guess. We'll see. Man, I wasn't kidding. We're getting a 4-3 and three record every year. Literally. It's the same. Jesus, dude. It's so annoying. It really is. I can't tell you how much it is. Because when I'm putting together a super team like this, I mean, what do you want from me, game? What do you want? Okay, I mean, we'll just roll with it, I guess, dude. I guess we'll just roll with it. We're second in the division. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, players are going to have to re-sign. Belly Price, he's coming back. Jesse Bates, also, I want him back. And besides that, I really don't need to re-sign anybody else. So we still might have 
a little bit of cap to maybe do something in free agency this year. So no playoffs once again here for us. We finish nine and seven. Of oh my gosh! Of course, two teams finish eleven and five in the division, dude. Well, that's that's not good, dude. Players were. I mean, uh, yeah. Let's check out the stats here. Drew Locke about thirty six hundred yards, twenty three touchdowns, six picks, sixty three percent completion rate. Keep in mind, this is gonna be more of a running team, so that probably matters a bit more. 1,200 yards here by Mixon, five touchdowns, one fumble. Receiving the ball, we get 72 receptions, 900 yards, and nine touchdowns here. From Mike Evans, we get 71 receptions, about 700 yards, no touchdowns from Marquez Hunt. John Ross, 63 receptions, about 800 yards, five touchdowns. Um, okay, and then Tyler Eifert has a decent year as well. Blocking the ball, I'd hope we did pretty good, I'd hope. Our left tackle still allows 11 sacks, but besides that, we did okay. Defensively, Vontez Burfick leads the team in tackles with 193 by Brown, 89 there by King. Sacks, we get 14 and a half by McKinley, 13 by Khalil Mack, 11 by Vontez Burfick, and then 5 here by Carl Lawson. So I'm happy with that. We had a decent year at the sacks department. Interceptions-wise, what did we end up with? Only a couple interceptions. That's underwhelming. So that's going to be it here for the end of the season. I guess let's go ahead and hop into free agency in the draft if we got any money available. Back here for the draft recap. Nobody that's going to start for us here in year five. Uh, yeah, I usually have my team built by now. And I'm just going to have to rely on the sim as usual here. And yeah, nobody that's going to start. We did get a decent tight end. Maybe he can add a little bit of help. At that tight end position, but yeah, we're pretty set here. So we're going to be back here in the fifth season. We know what time it is. It is Super Bowl or bus time here. Uh, let's go ahead and set our season goal. And then we'll take a look at the team. I mean, there's not a lot of whole bad about this team, you can say. Offensive line is very good. We have a good pair of tackles, really good center, and decent guards. Still a good tight end, and Eifert, wide receiving core, got a lot better. We have Mike Evans, we have Hunt, and we have Ross. They've all upgraded. Joe Mixon is up there in overall, and Drew Locks in 84 overall. Then when you look at the defense, it's just, it, dude, it's insane. I don't understand how we haven't done more. I mean, we have Khalil Mack, McKinley, Carl Lawson, Bugs here. Then cornerbacks, we got William Jackson, Desmond King, and Denard. Safeties, Kevin Byard and Jesse Bates. And then linebacking core stayed um, basically the same the whole rebuild. With Coney, Brown, and Perfect. So I'm hoping, I mean, this is the year. I know I say that every year. I'm not going to check back at midseason because we don't need to re-sign anybody. It's just going to be simulate straight to the end of the year. See if we're in the playoffs. And hopefully we are. Or this rebuild is going to be a pretty big failure for me. <laughs> Bro, we make the playoffs by the, oh my gosh, dude, 9-6-1. Jesus, look at our division. Oh my gosh, dude. We, we almost didn't make the playoffs again, and I would have been super heated about it. I mean, we're going to have a decent team heading into the playoffs here. We'll hit those auto upgrades as well. We're going to be taking on Oakland. Hopefully, we can get through freaking Oakland. If we can't, you know, we don't even uh, deserve a shot here. Going on, looking at the players, the stats. Drew Lock, 3,700 yards, 26 touchdowns to 11 interceptions, 62% completion rate. Not a great year. Running the ball, though, Joe Mixon has a pretty good year. 1,300 yards, 9 touchdowns. Receiving the ball, we get 73 receptions, 600 yards, 4 touchdowns. By Hun Evans, 73 receptions as well, and nearly 1,000 yards, 4 touchdowns. Tyler Eifert still doing it with about 600 yards, 5 touchdowns. And then John Ross putting up the majority of the touchdowns here with limited receptions. He has 10 touchdowns, about 800 yards. Blocking the ball, we somehow didn't do that good. Trent Brown allowed 16 sacks. He's like almost a 90 overall. Defensively, we get 104 tackles by Preston Brown. 89 by Perfect. 81 by King. Sacks, we get 12 by Mack. 10.5 by McKinley. 9 by Carl Lawson. And then a couple here by Brown. Interceptions, we get 4 by Jackson. 2 by Brown. And then only 2 ones here. I don't understand why we haven't gotten more picks this rebuild, but we're in the playoffs. We can play the moments ourselves, which should be fun. So let's go ahead and jump into it. 
All right, guys, so we're going to be in our first playoff game here, and the Raiders have Deshaun Watson. We get the ball first. I'm not going to jump in every moment. I'm only going to jump in on critical moments. Like this third down, I'll jump in. All right, so at least we should have an accurate quarterback here, I would hope. I, I would hope. It looks like they are going to send pressure. They don't. They back off a little bit. I'm going to try to fire it in to a tight hole there. Probably shouldn't have forced it. It's going to bring a fourth down for us. So that doesn't go as planned. We get the ball right back, though. Third down alerts. Third and one. My team should be able to handle it. Red zone alert. They should handle that. Third down. If anybody watches my quarterback career mode, we all know what Mike Evans was capable of in the red zone. So we'll see what he can do here. Going to try to get him the ball. And he comes up with it. He's going to get it down to the one. All right, they take me out. And we score off that. Man, our, gosh, I don't understand. After, like, every time we score, the other team can score pretty easily. Actually, we're scoring here. We're, we're doing the things. We're holding Oakland down. They finally get a touchdown. Please, defense. Defense? I'm going to need some help from you. We score. Oakland gets a field goal. Oh, gosh, it's a one-possession game. Red zone alert. We'll hop in. Yeah, the reason I do want to hop in here is a lot of the times I will get cheated by this sim if I just do play the moment. So we're going to hop in here. Joe Mixon's breaking tackles. Joe Mixon might have just secured us the game. That's huge. Joe Mixon impresses there. And we get the ball, and that should end it here for sure. Oakland, fourth down alert. We go for the field goal. Yeah, that should end it. In a pretty good game by us. We play Oakland, who had Deshaun Watson. They had Dante Fowler. Somehow they picked up Amari Cooper. So that what are the odds of that? He must have went in free agency, and they must have picked him up. So we get a playoff victory here. A pretty good one over the Raiders. Let's go ahead and see we're playing next. We're going to be taking on the Browns, a division rival. Dude, they've beat us like every time we've played them. This is going to be a good one. I want to get some revenge on them. Back in the playoffs here against Cleveland. We'll see what happens. Hoping to get a W here, but they're a pretty good offense in the sim. They're real tough to beat. Red zone alert, though. We'll hop in. All right, so we need a touchdown here. There's really no ifs, ands, and buts about it because Cleveland is a pretty high-scoring offense in the sim especially. I might just toss it to Joe Mixon. He should be open, and he is going to be open. Joe Mixon comes up with it, and he gets another touchdown. Already, Joe Mixon just from what I've played with him, has been a huge factor. Cleveland has the ball. They score a field goal. We get the ball. We're just not moving right now is the problem for us. Actually, we score a touchdown. Two-minute drill will hop in. All right, so this is a pretty big drive. If we're able to get points here, I feel pretty good about this. I feel really good, actually. Going to toss it to Eifert. He gets the ball. We'll go hurry up mode here. Try to get some snaps off real quick. Sometimes on this PA crosser, somebody will just get wide open on it. Tyler Eifert's going to get the ball, and he goes up high. Tyler Eifert comes down with it. We're in a third and twos. They're sending a little pressure here. It looks like from the safety, we'll see if anything comes open deep. And it should. We find Mike Evans, and he's breaking tackles, getting all the way down to the eight. I'm going to go hurry up mode and try to save this timeout. I'm really hoping we can get lined up pretty quick, though. Hike it. Hike it. That might be a touchdown. That might be a touchdown. Joe Mixon gets one, and we play that perfectly, letting the quarter here wind out. And we have the ball to start. Third down alert. I'll let my team see what they can do. They actually convert it. Third down alert. Big field goal. They miss it? What? Third down alert. Uh, we'll hop in. I mean that that's so big the third I mean the field goal we missed I can't believe they missed it. We're going to run it though with Joe Mixon. That's very close but I'm pretty sure we pick it up there. Yeah, we do pick it up. So we're going to get the first there red zone alert. It's going to be a second and 10 for us here in the red zone. Going to toss that to Mike Evans and he'll come up with that every time. Going to let this clock wind down as much as I can. Okay, so the two-minute warning has hit here. And if we can get a touchdown, we're going to be looking pretty nice. We'll see. Joe, why is Joe Mixon lined up at the wideout spot? It doesn't matter. He has a touchdown. Joe Mixon 
gets us a touchdown and likely secures us a W here unless something happens. We'll see. The Browns are going to score with a little time remaining, and we're able to kneel it out. We get a playoff victory and a huge one at that. Finally starting to win here in the playoffs. That feels good. It definitely does. Now let's go ahead and see who we're going to be taking on in the conference championship. We're going to be taking on the 7-8 and eight Colts, dude. We should destroy them, all right? we that's, that's just it. We should just destroy them. Conference championship is here against the 7-8 and eight Colts. Somehow they're in here. We'll see what we can do. Uh, Indianapolis is about to score. Third down alert. Uh, we'll hop in. And you know what the thing is? We have to play at Indianapolis because they won their division, it looks like, with that record somehow. So we're going to be in a third and five. We need to pick this up, if we're being honest here. Going to toss that to Eifer, and he should hold on to that. He does. Nice grab. So we'll continue to the next moment here. Red zone alert. My team should be able to handle that, and they do. Third down alert. Uh, I guess we'll hop in again. So it's going to be a third and six here we're jumping into. Not easy at all. Going to toss it back across my body. Kind of an ugly throw. Not kind of it was, but it works out. And we get the first to Evans red zone advantage I mean I don't why am I able to do this so easy but my team can't do much I mean Indianapolis is all over us bro two minute drill we'll hop in so we're gonna be working in a two minute drill dude it's so bright back there I literally can't even see at all I can't see I just tossed it to him thankfully it wasn't intercepted man it's gonna be a second and eight here just going to toss it. I'm going to float it out. John Ross comes up with it down to the 14. That was a great throw. Well, Joe Mixon here again in the receiving spot. Just going to toss it to Eifer. He lays down for it at the sticks. We'll go hurry up mode. See if I can get this in real quick. Oh, this is going to be bad, though. If we don't get it in and time runs out, we're going to be in a tough spot. Going to hike it. Going to do something. Just throw it away. Eight seconds remain. Second and goal. We're going to go for a pass here. And I need a touchdown. I need a touchdown. It's intercepted. McCain. Oh, dude, I'm not going to use this as an excuse. I literally couldn't see there, though. The, the freaking sun was just in my face. Red zone advantage. Team, do something, all right? They score a touchdown for us. Indianapolis, we need to stop. And we do hold him. Third down alert will jump in. All right, at least the sun is down. You know, that's that's helpful. I, just, I literally, I couldn't see. I don't know if you guys could, but I just couldn't see. Oh, there's nowhere to go. Oh, no, they're... Gosh, Eric Armstead gets in there for the tackle, the sack. We get the ball back. Third down alert again. You know, this is when it just starts getting hairy. Just, just... I mean, come on, dude. Look at what we're dealing with here. I'm going to float that to the middle. Eifert left alone. Eifert gets all the way up to the 22. That's a huge play. We'll see what our team can do. Big end of the game drive. I mean, we'll hop in, I guess. I mean, even getting a touchdown here, I don't feel comfortable. Because that leaves the Colts one possession down. And do we really think that... They won't score because I sure don't. Joe Mixon, though, gets cleared down to the 9, and I think I'm going to try to score as fast as I can just so we might have a chance if the Colts do score. Going to try to buy some time. Toss it. Back of the end zone. Evans has a touchdown. That's a great drive. That's a fantastic drive. The game is on the line. Defense is where I need you. Okay, they score most likely here. Actually, no, they don't. Third and eight. Third down alert. Watch them. Watch them. Destroy me here somehow. No, we win it. Yes. I thought for sure my team was going to punt it away with like 10 seconds remaining. And we were going to allow them to get in field goal range. But we end up getting a W here. And I'm pretty surprised about that. I did not know if we would get a W over the Colts. But we're moving on to the Super Bowl for the second straight rebuild. Can we get that back-to-back -back Super Bowl titles? Let's go ahead and see. 
Here in the Super Bowl, guys, we are taking on Dallas, and that's a tough matchup for sure. That's a horrible matchup, actually, to be honest with you. Because their defense can play. Their defense can play. And it doesn't seem like our defense can stop this. Third down alert, though, will hop in. So we're going to jump in here in a third and two. Pretty low score game, if we're being honest here. Just going to get it out to Eifert, and he should be able to hang on to that every time. Eifert has showed to be sure-handed from what I've played with him. Third down alert again, dude. Well, it's shown so far to be a pretty big defensive battle right now. Uh, if we could get a touchdown on the board, that would help. That would for sure help us. Gonna toss it. They leave Mike Evans open. That's a massive play right there. We get to Evans. I'm just wondering why can we hop in and do this and they can't. Red zone alert. I'm gonna try to get some points on the board. So with a third and four here, this is a very big play right here. Very big. Gonna try to scramble out. Toss it. Hunt. Touchdown and we're up. Dude. Freaking Drew Locke is very accurate. He doesn't miss a lot of passes. Dallas gets a touchdown. Two-minute drill. I'll see what our team can do. I don't want to jump in every time, but Dallas is in the red zone. Third down alert. Third and three right now. We need to pick this up. We need to pick this up. Just going to toss it down to old reliable Tyler Eifert. And he gets us up to the 33. We need a touchdown, though. Our team has got to move. Third down alert again. I just don't understand how our team is struggling so bad right here. I mean, we're doing pretty good. Mike Evans! Oh, that was tight. I thought we could fit it in there. That's what she said, bro. But uh, I thought we could fit it in there. Big field goal. I guess I'll come out and kick this. I'm kicking this piece for some reason. A lot of the time, my team will miss field goals. Hitting that makes it a pretty close game again. Pretty close here. It's getting down to it, though, dude. It's getting freaking down to it. Oh, let's see what uh, Dallas can do. They score a touchdown. No. We're going to have to hop in here in a third down alert suit if we can do anything. Toss it to Mike Evans, and he can't snag that. Really? Mike Evans doesn't miss anything like that. And it doesn't seem like our defense can just stop this run game. It, this is going to be tough to come back from. It really is. It really is. We'll see what our team can do, though. Bro. I think we get the... Oh, no, it ends it. I thought we got the ball back. That's going to be it for the rebuild. I thought, you know, we had a chance there. Dallas's run game, though, seemed to be too much. But either way, we got to the Super Bowl for the second straight rebuild, so I'm happy about that. Uh, and I really can't complain. I won the Super Bowl last rebuild, so we're doing the things out here. Let me know what you guys thought about this rebuild and leave a comment in the suggestions of who you want to see next rebuild and I'll shout you out at the start. Make sure you hit that sub button. That will be greatly appreciated, bro. Uh, and I'll see you guys next rebuild. I hope you guys did enjoy. Peace out.